What's going on? Welcome to AKC Sports Talk. If you can give me the HKL special, help the king out, hit the like, subscribe, and comment. All right, so today we're going to talk about, yep, uh, Lauren Jackson. And yes, the, you know, uh, what is it? The Southside Flyers uh, won the championship in, you know, in uh, uh, two out of three. So it took the max games of three games so let's uh, get into the article yep this is the wnbl so yep so wnbl southside flyers senet the, are the champions so wnbl not the nba and look at that picture yep so a lot of their families and a lot of their kids with some of these girls now you wouldn't really see this in the what I don't recall seeing this in the WNBA, but in the WNBL, yep, so a few kids. And, you know, uh, there's one legend that uh, played in the WNBA that's won a couple championships. All right, so, yep, so there they are. But let's uh, get into the article. In the decider of the Senate WNBL 23-24 champion, the Southside Flyers had come out on top over the Perth Lynx, clinching the title with a 115-81 in Game 3. Held at the Melbourne Sports Centers, Parkville, the match drew an attendance of 2,986 fans who witnessed a high-scoring and action-packed game. So the Southside Flyers, known for their exceptional teamwork and field goal accuracy, displayed a performance that outshined their regular season prowess. With a regular season average of 18.9 assists, they had increased this to 21.2 assists per game in the finals. Their field goal accuracy also saw an increase from 44.3 during the regular season to 45.4 in the finals, underscoring their efficiency in scoring. On the other hand, the Perth Lynx, who led the league with 84.1 points per game in the regular season, found themselves outscored in a decisive game. Despite the historical performance of reaching 100 points game final twice in the same season and showcasing the elevated three-point accuracy of 45.8, Percent during the finals, they couldn't replicate their high scoring antics against a well prepared Southside defense. Now, the game was a high scoring affair, reflecting the trend of the 23 24 WNBL finals, where teams averaged 89.9 points per game, a significant increase over the regular season average. Southside victory marked a historical treatment as they became the first team to play a semi final game three and a grand final game three in the same. WNBL season. The box score reveals the depth of talent in the Southside Flyers rosters with contributions across the board leading to their dominant win. Players like Becca Cole, Lalani Mitchell, and Maddie uh, Rocky were pitiful, combining for 46 points, and while Jasmine Dickey off the bench added 19 points with 85% uh, shooting efficiency, and the defense Team defensive effort was so commendable, significantly limiting per scoring opportunity. So you can see 115 to 81. And, you know, uh, and you have all these stats here. I'm just not going to read it off. But, yeah, so, you know, they did pretty good. And, yeah, there's a, even, uh, you know, Lauren Mitchell. Uh, let's watch just a little bit. I'm going to just uh, kind of fast forward just a little bit. I had some um, highlights, so we'll watch about 40 seconds. Play a relationship between Cheryl Chambers and See, so there it is. Yep, Becca Coe. Yep, so Becca Coe. And then there's Dickie. She did well. Yep, so it was a packed crowd, you know, for this uh, – for WNBL final. So Dickey was all over the place. And they've won the title. Congratulations. Yep. And there is a, a Lauren Jackson. So, yeah. And Mercedes Russell named a grand final MVP and the recipient of the Rachel Sport Meadow. So, yeah. And she scored the game winner in game two. So, that came at the buzzer in at Perth. 
So, yep, Mercedes Russell the Flowers is cheered by her team and is called out as the most valuable player during the Game 3 of the WNBL Grand Final Series between Southside Flowers and Perth at Melbourne Sports Centre Parkville on March 17, 2004 in Melbourne, Australia. So, yep, there they go. And don't forget, there's even a 42-year-old Lauren Jackson. So she she's, you know, in here uh, somewhere. Where the heck? I think she might be here or here. She's kind of hiding. But, uh, yeah, she was an uh, inaugural part of this team, too, because, I mean, you know, she's uh, won, you know, six, six of these titles. So And then won two NBA, WNBA titles with the Seattle Storm, if you remember Lauren Jackson. And she's even won the MVP uh, three times. So her teammate was, you know, um, Subert, but... That's another, uh, but yeah, but yeah, good job on, you know, the team and the ladies and yep. Yeah, and, you know, there's no virtual signing. So they had fun just, you know, playing basketball. And all we talked about was basketball and nothing else. So that's one thing I like about this. And I just thought, you know, this would be a nice story just to tell. So we, so there was no, uh, you know, virtual signaling or any of that stuff. And the ladies played basketball. They played efficient basketball. They even talked about how, you know, they thanked the, you know, the owner of the franchise and how they thanked everyone. And, you know, that's what made it possible uh, for everyone. And then, you know, the 2,000 people that was at that arena supporting them. So, yeah. So I'm kind of glad uh, for all of them that they just played basketball and successfully won a title. And, of course, because uh, I did live stream it. And, yeah, I mean, for Perth, they lost. I have my buddy who's uh, who's from Perth. So, yeah, I feel sorry for the Perth girls, but I don't feel sorry for him. <laughs> All right, so if you enjoyed any of this content, please give me the HKO Special Help account. Hit the like, subscribe, and comment. So wherever you are, I'll see you in my next video.